The Life and Sad Ending of Yma Sumac Yma Sumac was born on September 13, 1922, in Calo, Lima, Peru. A singer with an amazing four-octave range, Yma Sumac was said to have been a descendant of Inca kings, an Incan princess that was one of the Golden Virgins. Her offbeat stylings became a phenomenon of early 50s pop music. With her four to five octave singing range, exotic identity, and mysterious origins that were the subject of urban legend, the so-called Nightingale of the Andes offered mid-century North American audiences a break from the ordinary. While her album covers took advantage of her strange costumes and voluptuous figure, rumors abounded that she was, in actuality, a housewife named Amy Camus. It mattered little because there has been no one like her before or since in the annals of popular music. According to the Sumac legend, she was the sixth child of an Indian mother and an Indian Spanish father, who raised her as a Quechuan. She began performing in local festivals before her family moved to Lima, Peru. Once she was in Lima, she became a member of the Compañía Peruana de Arte, which was a collective of nearly 50 Indian singers, musicians, and dancers. Sumac married Moises Vivanco, the leader of the Compañía, in 1942. What is certain is that Sumac's basso-soprano voice won attention at an early age for its multi-octave musical range, and she went to study in Lima. Her mother was vehemently opposed to her seeking a future on the stage, preferring that she continue studies to become a teacher. In 1943 Sumac and the company went to Argentina to record several 78 RPM folk music singles that were released in Peru. In her early performing days, she used the stage name Ima Sumac, presumably in defiance of her mother. After the Compañía Peruana de Arte was disbanded, Sumac moved to New York City in the late 1940s, where she sang soprano in the newly formed Inca Taki Trio, featuring Vivanco on guitar along with Sumac's cousin Sholita Rivera, who danced and sang contralto. The trio fought an uphill battle in its first years, playing mostly at private parties and at spots such as Greenwich Village's La Parisienne Delicatessen. Four years later, Vivanco, Sumac, and her cousin Colita Rivero formed the Inca Taki Trio and moved to New York. By the end of the decade, they were performing in nightclubs throughout New York and playing radio and television programs, most notably Arthur Godfrey's TV show. The trio also became a fixture on the Borscht Belt Circuit and the Catskills. Sumac was signed as a solo artist to Capitol Records in 1950, releasing her first album, The Ten Voice of the Extabe, the same year. Voice of the Extabe was released without much publicity, but it slowly became a hit and Capitol began pushing Sumac with a massive marketing campaign. Sumac was finally introduced to the greater public during a performance with the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra. In 1950 Sumac recorded Voice of the Extabe, an album that sold more than 500,000 copies. In 1951, she made her Broadway debut in the musical Flahuli, which featured three songs written by Vivanco. The musical's lifespan was quite brief and it completed its run by the end of the year. Record company executives changed her recording name, reportedly thinking the name YMA Sumac would sound more exotic to the American public. This was followed by a series of successful recordings throughout the decade, including Mambo, 1954, Legend of the Hevero, 1957, and Fuego del Andy, 1959. Nevertheless, Sumac's career was ascending at a rapid rate, as she continued to release hit records and played sell-out concerts across the country, including one at the Hollywood Bowl and another at Carnegie Hall. She also toured Europe and South America, as well as Las Vegas nightclubs. In 1954, she appeared in a movie called Secret of the Incas, which starred Charlton Heston. By the end of the 50s, Sumac's audience had begun to decline and she was no longer as hip as she was in the first half of the decade. Sensing the erosion of her popularity, Sumac retired in the early 60s, 
without leaving any word or her location. Sumac went on to captivate audiences throughout North America, performing at New York City's Carnegie Hall in 1955 and singing with the symphony orchestras of both Toronto and Montreal. Following her appearance in the Broadway flop Flahui in 1951, Hollywood attempted to cash in on the YMA Sumac singing phenomenon, casting her in the Paramount films Secret of the Incas and Omar Khayyam. What Miss Sumac might achieve in straight concert, unimpeded by noisy competition as anyone's guess, wrote a reviewer for the musical Courier, of her Carnegie Hall performance. Musically, is more entertaining than cultural. If there were less distraction offered, and more focused concentration on the chief artist, YMA Sumac, one would have a better idea of the singer's quality and feel less like the viewer of a live Hollywood production. Since much recital going is dull anyway, last night's doings were welcome, if slightly baffling to the staid reviewer. She performed a handful of unannounced concerts in the mid-70s, and in 1987 she played New York's Ballroom Nightclub for a total of three weeks. She also had a stint in a Los Angeles club that same year. She followed these shows with occasional concert dates around the world. Though Sumac did not perform frequently in the 90s, she experienced a popular revival, as a cult of alternative music fans discovered the Exotica records of the 50s. The ongoing interest in Exotica and Sumac led to the CD release of her catalogue in 1996. Like Carmen Miranda, another Brazilian star turned Hollywood, Sumac offered American audiences a touch of south-of-the-border exoticism. But her otherworldly voice made her somehow different. YMA Sumac's success was based on novelty, wrote John Storm Roberts in his book The Latin Tinge, the impact of Latin American music on the United States. But the more conventional Latin and semi-Latin styles were regarded by the music business as a sure standby in hard times, even before the success of the Mambo and cha cha -chas. Publicists had a field day building on the images of a mysterious Inca princess and sun virgin. It was said that when a noted musicologist lured her away to school in Lima, 30,000 outraged Indian sun worshippers made the Andes echo with their wrath. Because of her weird, wonderful voice and her Inca ancestry, they considered her sacred, calling her Intipa Wawan, daughter of the sun, wrote Pathfinder describing information released by Sumac's publicity agents. In 1955 Picture Week claimed that medical experts had decided the star's range was due to unusual throat construction, while intrigued scholars felt it might be a throwback to pre-12th century when voices had greater range than those of today. What is certain is that Sumac faced the excesses of the celebrity rumor mill. Some critics spread the word that Rather than a Peruvian immigrant, Sumac was actually a Jewish housewife from Brooklyn named Amy Camus. Beyond what is considered a normal soprano voice, Sumac comfortably inhabited the realm of a coloratura soprano, often embellishing her agile voice with imitations of birds or beasts. Her versions of traditional Peruvian folk songs were further colored by elaborate orchestral treatments. While there is some disagreement about the true range of her voice, Sumac was known to move comfortably from B below low C to A above high C, often reaching her trademark staccato high Ds. She claimed to cover five octaves and attributed her ability to reach high notes to having been raised at a high altitude in Peru. While some suggested that this range made her unnatural for opera, Sumac felt uninspired by the music. I like music. That makes me cry or makes me laugh, she told the Los Angeles Times in 1951. Opera has nothing here. I like our old Inca folk songs. I like your Negro spirituals and your hillbilly music. That is from the heart. Nonetheless, Sumac's fabricated public image would come to stand in the way of her music. In 1971 some old fans in the music business helped Sumac make something of a comeback with the release of the rock album Miracles. Backed by a four-man band of guitar, bass, organ, and percussion, 
and aided by newer recording technology better prepared to capture the range of her voice, Sumac won new admirers. Another resurgence in the late 1980s was complicated by a 1987 television appearance on The David Letterman Show, during which the deprecating humorous style of host Letterman made a mockery of her serious rendition of Atapora, her first performance of ink and music before an American audience in more than two decades. The exotic silliness of her Capitol Records discs and her image from has long since turned Sumac into a nostalgic camp icon though her vocal gifts remain striking, wrote Variety in 1992. That same year she was featured in a German documentary called Hollywood's Inca Princess, and in the 1990s she was rediscovered by a new generation of American youth in search of new sounds. In 1996 Sumac gave performances in San Francisco and Los Angeles, followed by two performances in Montreal in 1997. As of mid-2004, she was reportedly living in the Los Angeles area, with no announced concert plans. Sumac died on November 1, 2008, aged 86, at an assisted living home in Los Angeles, California, nine months after being diagnosed with colon cancer. She was interred at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in the Sanctuary of Memories section.